Hello everybody, that's Lars from Colorlog. This is Brian, also from Colorlog. Today we are in the US, um, Florida, 90 to 100 degrees. 200 degrees out. So, um, very nice. So the plan is on this nice Honda here, we want to fix uh, the steering wheel. Look on this. But I have also some pictures before and then later, ho hopefully after. Yeah, hopefully. Um, but before we start, Brian, we got okay. the steering wheel kit. We're going to talk about the steering wheel kit and what's inside of it. So the steering wheel kit is going to come with something, of, of, with the product amount size that's good for the steering wheel or even maybe even small repairs about the same size. So this is perfect for any isolated areas, um, smaller areas. Uh, this would not be for the entire interior, but anything within this former size is going to be a good isolated repair kit. So, and it's going to come with a mild leather cleaner, a foam cube sponge for your cleaning. Uh, you have a, a, a sanding block to roughen up the surface if, uh, if it's needed. Um, and then you have a degreaser to degrease and pre-clean prep the, the leather. And then it's also going to come with a leather fresh to recolor the sections of leather or the piece of steering wheel that we're going to have to uh, apply more leather healer to, leather 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 fresh to. So the um, and then it's going to come with a sealer, which is the which is the leather shield, which is going to protect all of our hard work. So um, this is a perfect kit, and we also have the elephant fat within the kit that's also used as a protection, a topical protection. It's gonna help with the uh, conditioning of the leather. So, but the first thing we're gonna start with is the mild cleaner. Always cleaning, yes. Always cleaning first. It's very important and a very beneficial step to any leather care process. Okay, let's move to the car. This car is extremely dirty. It's got a lot of soiled areas here. We got a lot of transfer dirt. We have a lot of uh, makeup but mostly what it is is it's a it's a lot of oils and grease from the palms of our hands and it's it's uh it's sticking to the leather surface so we could also use the color lock cleaning brush as a substitute if uh if we needed more agitation but if we allow the cleaner to do its job and let it do its work it's it's gonna be more than beneficial and more than efficient with uh, being able to remove this 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 soiled area. So without is it minimal pressure? I'm using very minimal pressure to get the uh, the effectiveness that's happening. So we're wanting trying to keep the friction to a minimum because steering wheels are all the time being grabbed and all the time under an extreme amount of abrasion. So if we just allow the product to do the work, this is what it was made for. So we don't need to necessarily get aggressive and we don't need to uh, pl apply lots of force. And in an area like a steering wheel, you don't want to apply a lot of force because Again, it's constantly under pressure. It's probably one of the most abused interior sections in any car, with the exception of a bolster or a steering wheel, which is almost equal. But the, the uh, trade-off is, is that we're going to have more oils because we're actually physically coming in contact with the steering wheel using our hands and using our, uh, using our hands and using our, uh, our, our body sweat directly yeah. in contact yeah. with the wheel. When you show the cloth, you see that um, even the mild leather cleaner, so a lot of people ask me, can I use the strong leather cleaner? Yes, you can, but the mild leather cleaner is really strong yeah. enough. You see how proper clean um, you get off and it already looks, it already looks much more better than, already, than before. Yeah, already looking a lot better.
So, Brian is uh, finished with the, with the cleaning process. Brian, what do you think? Is it clean or...? Uh, it's clean, but it still needs a lot of more attention to it. Uh, the cleaning factor is going to be one part. So the next step and then second step of the kit is we have the sanding pad, which is equivalent to uh, 250, 300 grit paper. But the important part is, is that the interface pad that's inside of here, so that as we're going over certain areas, it's not affecting the stitching or it's not affecting uh, certain creases and we're not removing too much. So if it, if it was too flat, this would happen. So the interface pad between there is uh, makes this perfect for with what we're about to do is uh, kind of rough up the section and uh, then we're gonna follow up with a degreaser. So what we want is to make this area very smooth. Huh? So if you if you go with your hands over it and you feel it is rough, then just send it down with the sanding pad to get a smooth a smooth surface again. Correct? Correct. Don't, we don't want to worry because we're going to see a lot of discoloration and it's, uh, it's typically it's going to look worse before it looks better and that's okay. Um, so the next two or three steps of uh, the process is going to fix the, what appears to be damage that we're causing. We're taking a sanding pad to it, but uh, the sanding pad is very beneficial, very, very beneficial. Okay, third step is gonna be the degreaser. This is following up after we've sanded it. And this is gonna to help to remove any potential leftover oils or greases or anything like that left into the steering wheel because before we lay the leather fresh down, we want to have a sterile and clean surface so that when we lay the leather fresh, there's no oils that are gonna prohibit the leather fresh from being able to adhere 100% in full contact of the leather as we lay it. So this is a simple step. We're just removing the oils and this is also going to help clean up after any of the messes that we made. Um, and it's going to help prep the, the area before we lay the leather fresh. You can do this. This is a really easy couple steps to make your steering wheel look brand new again. Um, I think the most intimidating part is taking a sanding pad to it, but I can assure you it's perfectly okay as long as you follow up with the step by steps right here. So the very first, like I said, the very first follow-up after the sanding pad is the degreaser, which is step three. So this is the fourth step in the process. This is the fun part because this is the part where we're going to see the results and uh, the, the effort come to life real quick. So we're going to use the Color Lock Leather Fresh. This is uh, more than enough. It comes with a little uh, bolt inside of here to help us mix it up you'll hear it inside there so it's very important to give this a little bit of a shake before opening it um, we're uh, basically mixing uh, the, the transparent healer along with the pigment 4060 and that's going to help uh, just give the product a little mix just like you would with most any other types of paints, acrylics, anything like that, you always have to give them a little shake. So, um, again, this is the fun part and this is where we get to actually see, and a lot of, uh, a lot of people might be scared of this step, but it's very easy. So, we have a black. Black is a very universal color. Most, most 
steering wheels are black. Are black, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the steering wheel is, um, I can, I can tell, is uh, it comes always with a black leather fresh, ready to use, yeah. and um, of course you can have all other colors, but um, the steering wheel keel is always with black. So if you if you have a steering wheel in a different color, then just let us know the name of the color. Mostly we have the red sip T or the formula by us and we can um, mix for you the correct fresh what will match to your steering wheel or to your polster or wherever you want to re-dye leather or vinyl. And um, what you're doing now is dapping. Why are you not dapping? You're dabbing because um, when you when you wipe it, you get stripes, correct? Well, we can wipe. Um, it's more of a craftier process if you wipe because now we really have to pay attention to our brush strokes. So dabbing is a lot more safer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're going to have a more of a consistent finish by dabbing. If we wipe, which you can wipe, but you need to be a little bit more uh, diligent with it and make sure that you're not... Um, streak in the product. So dabbing, which is very easy to do. Obviously the color is going to look rich and it's going to look fresh right off the start because it's still wet. Um, it dries very fast. Well we have but by, Florida weather. Yeah, today. Florida weather. So <laughs> it's drying very fast right now. Uh, the car is on and the AC is on it but it's, uh, it's still it's going to dry very fast. But dabbing is going to help us maintain consistency. Um, as we're not looking to add a huge thick layer as much as we're trying to uh, take what we have right here with this single dab and we want to feather it around and stretch it out as you know get it get it thin thinned out the best that we possibly can um, it would be better to lay three or four very thin coats in comparison to one thick coat yeah, absolutely. So if we did one thick coat, it would, it's the type of, uh, it would look like the type of repair where it's obvious. And yeah. uh, we don't, we don't want our repairs to be obvious. So um, I would, I would maintain and I've always suggested to go with uh, thinner layers and help build it up. Yeah, so. absolutely. So if it's not that warm like it is today, um, I can recommend um, so you can let it dry by himself and it just needs a longer time if it's not so hot like this. Or what you can do also is um, use a hair dryer or if you have a heat gun, use a heat gun. Don't burn the leather of course, so be careful, but you can dry it very fast and then apply one layer after the next layer. And thin layer makes more sense. So multi-time multi, multi -time layers, thin is more official than when you use a when you try to, to apply straight away a thick layer. Correct. And if you have some contrast stitching, which is um, it's not very common, but you might have some contrast stitching, um, you'll want to mask that off or you will end up uh, dyeing the stitch, the, the uh, black color or the color of the leather fresh. Yeah, you have to um, cover up, no? Cover it up, mask it off. Mask it off, yeah. With a little bit of a uh, thin masking tape, painter's tape, and uh, that will work. If uh, we could also, if, if, if you feel a little worried about hitting your plastics, you can um, obviously mask those off as well. Um, if you're careful and just kind of work around them, um, that's fine too. So. If, uh, if we have uh, the majority of the damage for this steering wheel was actually up here along the top side. So with the perforated leather here, it's been a little bit more forgiving in this particular steering wheel situation. So, but the flatter areas is where we have, we had more problems in these flatter areas than what we will have in this perforated area. So a little bit of leather fresh will go a long way. So, Brian, what's the next step? So the next step is we're on. And if um, this is a step that's going to make a good repair versus a great repair, 
and it's a it's a pretty essential step and one that I would recommend to you so we've just laid one layer of the leather fresh down on the steering wheel we've got one layer down here it already looks a lot better it's more black again it's starting to look uh, alive again so we want to just really lightly sand this first layer one time because uh, and this is what's going to help with it becoming more of a more of a better quality end result um, we're going to make sure that we're going to get a hundred percent adhesion with the leather healer leather fresh and it's going to help smooth the surface so that we're not left with uh, texture and we still have a, a really great feeling steering our steering wheel by the time that we're done with it um, so with the sand and pad it's it's already been it's already been used so some of the abrasive activity from it is gone now so if, if this pad started off at 250 300 grit give or take we're probably looking at about five to eight hundred right now since it's got a little bit of uh, a little bit of its abrasiveness has been worn off so at this point we're probably around five to eight hundred grit give or take um, and that's just enough to help us level this first layer you can repeat this process between each layer and again this is um, how much time you're willing to dedicate towards a better end result versus a we got good better and great basically um, so and uh, no matter what you know even on a good repair is a million times better than um, a steering wheel that never gets this at all you know if we just cleaned it and walked away it's is um, this is actually this is uh, doing a more of a more of a discredit to the steering wheel as opposed to us trying to keep up with it maintain it and keep the level of the same the same level of um, of uh, paint and protection on the steering wheel one of the things I've always said too is is that it's uh, uh, with all the years of doing paint correction how incredible would it be if we were able to put the clear coat that we polished off the car back so fortunately enough with leather we've always had that ability with color lock um, so with any material that we've removed, we can now replace it and put it back. So if we think about it in association with the exterior clear coat and how much we're removing through paint polishing, for example, this is incredible. You know, I would love to be able to paint a car after I've polished it. That makes sense. <laughs> but there you go. Okay, so. The final stages to this simple simple repair is going to be to protect it. And we have two different options here. Um, one is the leather shield, which is going to be a sealer or protector for it. And two, the museum elephant fat, which is more of a care product is going to uh, is going to is going to help fix the leather more. So on a newer car, the shield is fine. If we're dealing with an older car, for example, where the leather has been uh, neglected for a couple years or several years or stuck out in um, heat like this for a lot of years, it would be a good idea to use the elephant fat first and then follow up the next day with the shield. So, but today we're going to show you both and um, I'll start with the uh, leather shield if we wanted to consider this to be a brand new vehicle with a semi good uh, steering wheel then uh, this will be more than sufficient and same process as the leather heat as, as the leather fresh is um, a, a little bit of product yeah. it's completely Do, transparent say, say it uh, just again um, the leather shield just start um, just, so. The application of the leather shield is very similar to the leather fresh. Um, we're just going to put a little dab onto our applicator. This is a completely transparent product, so effectively it's, it's going to dry to the same color. Um, same process, 
Uh, we can we can we can do a little bit more wiping with this than we can with the, the leather fresh as opposed but we're gonna dab this on and it's creating a protection that's gonna help lock in the color pigment and that's gonna help so that we can have some form of a, a barrier against our our hands and our friction when we're now grabbing the steering wheel we got something protecting it from us grabbing directly onto the color. So this is a, basically a top coat. UV protecting. And a color, a color protector. All right, so we just did the leather shield as a demonstration and uh, now we're gonna move on to a product that I myself, I use quite regularly. Um, if anybody who follows my activities with leather or leather care, uh, this for myself is, is a much used product. So, because what we're doing is, is we're maintaining, we're maintaining a proper pH within the leather, which allows leather to be stay malleable, to stay flexible, to stay breathable, to stay in its very best condition. And we're not talking about necessarily the topical, the topical side to it as much as we are the underlying side, the the actual leather that is underneath of the pigment. So, the leather fresh, the leather shield, these are breathable products. These are breathable products, and it's allowing this leather to to get the air that it needs and to it's still it's still porous so the correct a correct way of applying uh, the elephant fat is is to uh, apply it and not necessarily take it off it's gonna leave a sheen at first um, I like to use my hands and kind of massage it in because typically we are uh, we are uh, we're trying to get the leather we're, we're 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 aiming to get the leather into a into that malleable state and we're trying to keep the leather in its very best condition so when leathers dry this is when they crack when leathers uh get too too moisturized they will oxidize or they will uh you know begin to fall apart so it's a very healthy balance between too much or too little and we want to stay right there in the middle and uh the elephant fat helps the leather stay at that ideal stage. So if we were dealing with a really old car with a vintage steering wheel, for example, you're gonna wanna use elephant fat all day long. Um, it's gonna help maintain to keep that leather and to its very best preservable condition. Um, so as you can see, it's, it is glossed, it has glossed the steering wheel some and that's okay I'm I'm okay with that I'm not in a rush with my process and I'm not trying to uh, uh, simply clean in condition and walk away and call it done I'm understanding that the leather is going to take a little bit of time for it to uh, fully absorb this product into it so ideally what I would do is is I would I would apply the elephant fat and literally let it set overnight let it sit all night long in its thick application, if that makes sense, um, and give it the time that it needs for it to actually penetrate the leather. Because it, it, it's unlike the, unlike the thinner viscosity fluids, this is a little bit thicker and it will take some more time to, to penetrate the leather. By me using my hands, um, and it's perfectly safe if I wanted to use my bare hands as well, but if I, but by me using my hands, I can add a little bit of heat to the product, which is kind of helping to induce it going into the actual pores of the leather a little bit at a, a little bit of a faster rate than if we just wiped it on and walked away. Um, if we wiped it on and walked away, we have to give it a little bit more time. So I've I've just been in the habit of always using my hands with elephant fat. And again, I'm not looking to say that the job is finished as soon as I am done with this. Um, I wanna leave this product on the steering wheel overnight to, uh, 
to uh, allow it to do its job correctly.